platform two does not stop here. Please stand clear of the edge of the platform as the approach of the train. Many, if not all of the videos I've produced cater for a very wide audience, not just the railway enthusiast community. It is with this in mind that I realise that the British railway system can have a few words or acronyms which are completely unknown to the casual viewer. So here is a short list of things which may crop up when you are watching not only my videos, but others on YouTube. First of all are the phrases up and down. Typically on the British Railway Network, up refers to the line towards London and down refers to the line away from London. And this is the reason why you will often say I'm going up to London or I'm going down to the coast. But what about powering the actual trains? Well, unless it is diesel or battery or powered, Two ways of getting electricity to the train are used in Britain. Third rail running is the term used to describe electric railways which as the name implies find power from a third rail next to the two running lines at a power of 750 volts DC. It is typically but not exclusively found in the south and southeast of the country. It does have its drawbacks however. For one the speed of the trains is limited and the rail can be prone to icing up in extreme weather. Also, precautions must be taken by railway maintenance staff to ensure they do not step on a live rail during engineering works. Catenary is the phrase used for the overhead wires which provide power to electric trains. Typically this is 25 kV AC. The power is transferred to the train by means of this device, called a pantograph. Speeds used in this method can be much higher than third rail and at time of this video enable the high speed javelin trains to run at 140 miles an hour. A passenger train which uses electricity is mostly referred to as an EMU or electric multiple unit, such as these examples at London Paddington. This is a security announcement reminding passengers to keep a watchful eye on their luggage and personal belongings at all times. Unattended luggage and unnecessary security alerts. The left luggage office is located on the railway network. Do not become a victim of crime. The diesel equivalent being a DMU or diesel multiple unit, such as this example at Ship Lake. If a train is to be hauled by a locomotive, whatever attached to it will be called a rake, i.e. a rake of carriages or a rake of freight wagons. And then there is a system on the train called AWS. This is the automatic warning system. A disc inside the cab either shows black, which means the signal approaching is green, 
or is yellow black in the style of a sunflower, which indicates the next signal is at caution, with yellow, W yellow, or stop, red. A horn will sound inside the cab to indicate the next signal is not green, and the driver will have to push an acknowledgement button within 2.75 seconds, otherwise emergency brakes will be applied. The indicator will then change from black to its sunflower position and remain like this until a green signal is approached, whenever again it will change back to black. This system was mainly superseded by the TPWS, the Train Protection and Warning System, in the late 1990s. And finally, you may hear the phrase TOC, which is the acronym for train operating company, such as Southeastern or Greater Anglia. And these in my view are the main ones. There are of course many industry specialised ones, but they are not really spoken about outside of the industry. As such, this is not an exhaustive list, but hopefully it will give you a little overview of just what us railway enthusiasts are talking about. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe, and if you can, get out there, get on the railway and see where it takes you. Thanks very much for watching.